Greetings ladies and gentlemen, this is Carlos Tophilos and let's have a quick look at Machiavellian now, shall we? Well, to start it off, let me tell you that I did not expect to sink so many hours into this title as I have recently due to the fact that I lack almost any interest in all the prison architect type of games. This one however has kept me interested for quite some time now and that just makes me happy. So what is it? Well it's an evil mansion management game which the developer state is inspired by the likes of Dungeon Keeper, Prison Architect and all the horror movie cliches. It is developed by Wild Factor and published by Good Shepherd Entertainment. Right out the bat, I am glad to say that the Linux version runs great and the game fully supports 21 by 9 aspect ratio resolutions. Story wise, there are no campaigns or scenarios to speak of. Every time you start a new game, you are introduced to a simple story of the game and are given the opportunity to hire a few basic minions to do your bidding. Then you are thrown into a randomly generated world where you must start building your evil mansion in order to lure unexpected victims in in order to harvest them for food. Cause after all, your minions need to keep their tummies full. Speaking of minions, the roster is quite good for the initial release. You have your regular madmen, zombies, skeletons and mummies to start your mansion off. And after a while, you are able to hire more exclusive minions for your cause like vampires, werewolves, frankenstein monsters etc etc. With each minion type also having their own special needs and their benefits. As for the general gameplay of the game, well, most of the time you will simply be spending juggling your minions tasks around. A minion could be excellent in one job and crappy at another, but don't think that you will simply get a single minion for a single job. Oh no, you will fail miserably when you do that. Instead, you will have to carefully manage and juggle jobs between your minions in order to have your mansion perform at a good enough level. And that is kind of why I generally don't like these kind of games. There's just so much micromanagement involved. And as we are already on the topics of dislikes, here are my issues with the game. So as mentioned, the micromanagement. I wish there was a way to either reprioritize jobs per minion or a separate profile tab which would allow you to change the jobs of every minion with a single click. You see the issue is that in the jobs panel, the priority seems to follow from left to right. Meaning that if you have one minion set as a cook, he or she will not cook anything before every item that needs storaging has been storaged, if you have him or her also do the storaging job. Sometimes it is really useful to play those priorities around for specific minions. And speaking of minions, they are brain dead idiots. I apologize, but that is probably the best way to describe them based on the gameplay and the whole point of the game. You see, when you successfully lure victims to your mansion and kill them off, what will your minions do next? Hack dead bodies for food before they rot, which happens to happen incredibly quickly? No, they will do almost everything else, even if you assign them as chefs. This makes you go manually asking every minion to hack different bodies until the job is done. Why? Priorities minions, come on. And then there were bugs. Firstly, not exactly a bug but uh, kind of an oversight in my mind. If you build a wall and then build a door on top of it, then your minions will essentially build a door on top of a perfectly solid wall making the whole thing absolutely useless. The wall should be automatically dismantled when placing a door over it. Then at one point saving a game would seemingly save a game, but then when I loaded the same game, it became evident that the save had not actually taken place. It is not nice to lose about an hour's worth of gameplay in a management game. Also when the audio is maxed out and you go and save the game and then reload it, the music gets louder and louder which is simply weird. Then, when submitting feedback through the in-game GUI, it will say thanks for the feedback etc etc for the whole duration of your game. The message only disappears when you either reload or quit it. Then there is the combat. Well, the interface during combat is, let's say, clunky at best. 
In order to cast any minion's abilities, you need to specifically select a minion and cast a spell. Why can't there be a global menu which would grant you access to every selected minion's abilities? Also, why can't the minions continue fighting after casting an ability? Also, there doesn't seem to be any shortcuts to casting abilities. This all adds up to a horrible micromanagement for the whole combat thing. And the last thing that seems to gripe me is during gameplay, there are some random events which will happen. Which are all good, I'm all for them, they are awesome. However, one of those events includes that you discover an audio tape, which you need to listen and decide which resource you want to throw at it. Well, the background music doesn't lower itself during that section, so good luck. If you didn't turn down the audio before the random event occurred, you cannot even back out to turn it down in order to come back to the event. So you're out of luck for this time. But enough about the bad and the ugly. All in all, I have sunk 19 hours into Machia Villain and I will probably sink a lot more into it. This, for me, is really, really a lot for this type of game. I love the aesthetics and I love the soundtrack. I only hope that the developers will keep on developing this title further, adding new elements to the game. As for the time being, I have pretty much seen all that the game has on offer. Would I recommend this game to anyone? Well, absolutely. It is an awesome game which can keep you occupied for days on end. And should the devs add more stuff to it, then even longer. The replay value is pretty much for as long as you feel even slightly interested in the title. But for 19 euros and 99 cents, eh, only if you're really deep into the horror cliches and the prison architect type of games. I got it for 17 euros and 98 cents, and I went for the deluxe edition, which includes the soundtrack. Would I buy it again? Well, for a discounted 10 to 15 euro price range, yeah. But for 20 euros, ah, uh, I don't think so. But that's just me. And with that being said, I hope you liked what you saw, I hope it was helpful for you, and I wish you a lovely rest of your day. Bye bye.